One of my jobs, many jobs, is uh, putting up the banners that you see around town as sandwich board signs. And uh, anybody that ever wants to help me do that, I'm, I'm always willing to help, take some help. But yesterday, uh, the golf, uh, the, 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 co the coach of the girls' golf course team at South Lake said, I want to help. And, you know, Connie came over, Connie called me up, she said, hey, you know, she wants to help. Now, when you see this lady, she's not as big as you, but she's really strong. <laughs> so with that, Carol Molesky, head, head coach. I mean, they're like, I know her. She actually plays golf. Or, but I know many of you are my friends, my neighbors, my fellow runners, some of my tennis players, and my Hidden Creek member friends who actually live on the golf course, Ray and Julie over there who came to support too, where I was a member for eight years, and now I play at Ruston National, longtime golfer. And I coached the girls team for four years at South Lake. So uh, I'm very familiar with Ruston National and the facilities and the golf over there. Whether I'm hitting balls or running on the paths over there, it's well used. <laughs> and we want to keep that and support it. And also it's important because it also affects the, the budget of the schools and everything as, as well, which has, I don't think has been mentioned because we use open space, whether it's for our sports are funded by a lot of these people in the room, the teachers, some of the administrators, long time that sit at that desk over at South Lakes. We are, we're self-funded. 95% of the sporting events in all of Fairfax County, we pay for out of the booster money. It's not funded by the Fairfax County budget, only transportation to and from events. So the school out of the booster money pays for coaches, uniforms, the parents pay for all that. So we want to keep that going. How we raise that money? Community events, community activities. Do you know how many events we have at Resta National for charities to raise money for a lot of things? So we should mention that because it's not just us using it. We raise money for a ton of charities. We raise it for the schools. We raise it for good causes. We raise it to cure cancer. Corporate sponsors use that golf course every, at least once or twice a week. Hidden Creek rents their golf course out for use like that. People use it for fundraising. That's important. That's a lot of dollars. And those golf events raise a lot of money and are very popular. We do one at South Lakes at Resta National. We raise money for boosters. That's part of our income. So we're losing money if that is gone. And, and where are we going to go? Where are the, the, the golfers going to be? Okay, that's us. That's all these little kids too. That's where if they start, they play with their parents, they play with their grandparents. I have so many people out of your scene over there. They're bringing their little ones. We have a whole development program of golfers over there at Ruston National. I have friends who I golf with. I'm coaching their grandkids now. They're like, oh, Carol's, co you're coaching my granddaughter over there. And they're either at Hidden, they, they could belong to Hidden Creek and they're still playing at Ruston National now. It's a, it's a dual thing. We do a lot of dual events across both of the courses. So there's a lot of people in this community that use that. And so it's very important for us because if, if rest, and, and then I've heard, well, we still have Hidden Creek. We don't. It's private. It is a private membership course. We can't afford to go play there. Okay, so don't let people tell you that. It's not public. You cannot go play golf there. 
you have to know somebody or be a <coughs> member. And a lot of our community cannot afford that. Sure. The kids that are on my team, we don't, they can't afford that. We want everybody to have an opportunity. And so we need a public facility that we can afford. So we have a boys team, we have a girls team. Langley girls team plays at that course. George Mason plays at that course. Falls Church, why? They don't have any courses to play at. They don't have. There's only private courses. Five or six schools use rested because they don't have anywhere to play. We even have to pay to get on the county courses. So it, there's not anywhere to go, and we're not going to Hidden Creek because it's private. So just remember that amongst your golf friends and what it means to the schools and the kids growing up. It's not a just about playing golf either. The girls in, on my team and the, will tell you it's about a life experience and something they can use for the rest of their lives. Look at all the people who still play golf in this room. Okay, you do it with your friends. My friends are here. We golf together. Ray, I play tennis with his wife. It's something that they learn that they can use for the rest of their lives. They don't have to get 20 people to play a sport. They can go out there any time by themselves and get a group to play with. It teaches them a life lesson, how to build relationships, how to, they can move anywhere and say, yeah, I used to play golf and wrestling with my friends. And they can go anywhere and do that. And so it is a great skill for all these young people to learn to play and use that going future. So that's why we want your support, and that's why South Lakes is supporting this, because this is our community, and we feel passionate about it. Thank you. If Reston National goes, how long do you think it's going to take for Hidden Creek to go? I mean, look, look at the map. Most of, a lot of it is already bordering on commercial or Wheelie Avenue, and the majority of the rest is bordering on high, uh, like a rental apartments. There are homes there, but certainly not like this, like the South Coast, of course. And and who is going to defend that? Right. So, think about that for a while. Next. Uh, we're going to introduce uh, the host of Rest in Impact. I've been on that show twice myself, uh, posing as George Bailey uh, with uh, Mary Bailey. We had a great time doing that. He, he's a great interviewer. Uh, member of the Sierra Club, John LaVos. There he is. That's some quality speakers to follow, I'll tell you that. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, John. Thank you guys for inviting me to come today. And thank you, uh, Rescue Reston, for all you've done for the community in protecting our open space against these guys, uh, these carpet baggers. <laughs> also, I want to thank the Reston Association, Reston Citizens Association, and Supervisor Hudgens, who de deserves special thanks on this because we've had a supervisor, in this case, stand up with the community. That doesn't always happen, folks. Yeah. Also got the Sierra Club who told me that, to let you know that they, they endorse what you're doing and they back you up too. Um, this is a great crowd. Now we're all inside warm and cozy and that's really nice. But you know, we need to uh, make no mistake about it. We need a much bigger group on the 21st of January at nine in the morning, which is a, you know, not a fair hour for those of us who are retired, but we're gonna do it. <laughs> It's at the Taj Mahal, where the Board of Zoning Appeals is gonna to listen to these guys from Northwestern Mutual who want to claim that they don't have to do anything to have by right uh, development, to, re to do their unplanned development, what it is, whatever it is they basically wanna do. And uh, make no mistake about it, when they say redevelopment in this case, they mean pavement and buildings, condominiums, as far as the eye can see. In a place where we have trees and green at the present time, trees and green that help us breathe better air, and they're going to obliterate those trees and green, that's their plan, if they're allowed to play through. 
quick look at the map of Reston tells you why they want to do this. That golf course runs right along parallel to the uh, 267 and now becoming rail line. That golf course, buildings on that golf course will be within easy walking distance of two separate metro stations. Uh, this is big money for them, folks. And it's no accident that they've decided to pursue this appeal right now. There's this new draft rest and master plan, which as you've been told already, in fact provides that this is traditional open space and it will continue to be recreational open space into the future. Having that confirmation on the record will make it doubly hard for them to undo it, and it will take a long time to do it. This is a shortcut they're trying to get, and it, it could be a very serious, very serious problem. Now, having said that, it doesn't mean the new master plan will keep them from doing it. Should the board of supervisors turn tail on us at some point and walk away or get, uh, give a little more favorable treatment to a developer, we might have to face this issue again. But this, this is the big one, this is the big battle. I've, before I came here today, I, I checked with my good friends at Google. I want to find a, uh, out a little bit more about Northwestern Mutual and what kind of battle we're facing. But let me tell you these folks, this, folks. These people are very familiar with legal battles. They're engaged in a whole bunch of them right now. Just Google them if you don't, you don't think I'm telling you the truth. Uh, right now, they are engaged in major legal battles. For example, against charges of deceptive, even fraudulent business practices. Against charges of discrimination against legal immigrants. Yes, I said legal immigrants. And against charges of unfair labor practices of all sorts against their own employees. These people are tough. They're gonna to do whatever it takes to, uh, to beat us. Uh, they're very serious about this, and we really need to be up for this. It means we need a crowd three, four times this size hopefully all in yellow on the 21st. This is an all hands on deck event, folks. I look forward to, to seeing you there on the 21st. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks for coming. Next on the agenda is Ray Waddell, uh, representing the real estate community. I, 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 this time around, I specifically wanted to, uh, to get someone involved that had, has some real, uh, real estate experience. So Ray? Thank you, John. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate everybody in the big turnout. Hope you get two or three times as many on the 21st. Thank you very much. Um, it's been a real honor to be asked to join this group. John and Connie and Colin, Ken and Carol, Lisa. They've all been, and Robin, if she's in the area, they've all been absolutely fantastic. It's been just a real pleasure to work with something that's this worthwhile. And like John has said, and we've talked many times, it doesn't matter whether you're black, white, Republican, Democrat, conservative, it doesn't matter. This is the one issue where 100% of the people should be behind this. I was asked to do a real estate analysis. You know, we have a lot of people with a lot of fire and brimstone up here. We all agree with that. I say amen to all of you. But let's get down to the nuts and bolts of what's going to happen to real estate values if this plan goes through. So after months and months and months of statistical analysis and all of that, I'd like to narrow it down to a visual, so here's what we've got. This is what we have now, an Audubon certified cooperative sanctuary, and this is your backyard. So if you want me to promote this, sell your house, it's pretty easy to do. It's fun to do. Prices are going up, the subway's coming in, there's population is growing, business here. You know, we're going to have an increasing equity in all your homes for many years to come, assuming we stay with the picture on the left. Now let's just say this zoning proposal goes through. And you have a whole lot of supply coming in of who knows what. But this is the picture on the right. Now if I'm coming to your house and I'm looking at your backyard and I'm looking at this, I have a lot less confidence that I'll be able to sell your home quickly at a high price, and a lot less confidence that these prices are going to continue to rise. In fact, just the opposite. So we don't need 
detailed analysis here. It's absolutely clear that if this goes through, if you're on the golf course or contiguous to it in any way, and the spillover effect is going to hit you. And we gave an email address earlier for the PCA, and a lot of people have sent them your <coughs> comments on paragraph or two. Thank you very much. But if you haven't, if you can throw in there that one of your major concerns is you don't want to see your real estate values torpedo, that would be a very helpful thing for the BZA to consider. So, so I promised everybody I'd keep it brief. We've got a lot of speakers tonight. I'm going to turn it back over to John, but any help you can give, I appreciate all the help you've given to this point. Any help you can give going forward, see you on the 21st, 8.30 that morning. Thank you. <laughs>